Hey guys, January the 16th here, Central Illinois, one degree below zero. It's going to be a cold day today, up in the 40s next week, so we can handle that. Anyhow, uh, we're working on the Dayton Hill Climber. Things are coming along, slow, but they're coming along. Uh, I finally took it and uh, I gave it a bath in hot water and powdered Tide, and that takes the paint off of these older uh, uh, train uh, cars and toys, uh, lickety split. I mean, uh, uh, it would be easy to take every one of those, those, uh, Lionel standard gauge cars and dip them in a, a hot bath of, uh, boiling water and tide, and there would be no paint left on it. That's a very good job. So we're getting things kind of set up where what we're trying to do is we're trying to get, uh, uh, the, uh, the stance and the swing just right on this. You want it to, you want it to look centered on your power unit, uh, but you don't want the power unit so close to the uh, the steps that it can't make a, a swing. And I will, of course, try to uh, to uh, manufacture it to run on a 42-inch radius, as uh, was uh, popular at the time. But uh, we've got it setting on a set of, uh, of 33 uh, cow catchers. That's what I'm planning on putting on the front of these things. I've already set up a trolley system for it. I wanted to see, wanted to get the gauge just right uh, when you set the body on this. That uh, that the edge of each one, depending on what you call the front or the back, that the the rim of those wheels don't touch the uh, don't touch the steps. And now, right now, from screw head to screw head is six and a half inches. That seems to be just about perfect. I've also taken. There was a quarter, whoop, there we go. There was a quarter inch ledge uh, in those open holes that came into the center. I took my uh, nibbler and my Dremo tool and uh, I cut them virtually up against the, the, uh, the side of the car. And then I filed them down. That allows plenty of swing for this motor to ride in there. So what I'll have to do next is <clears throat> this thing is about... <clears throat> excuse me, it's about 13 inches long, and it is three inches wide in there. I want to cut a base plate a little bit less than three inches, but the full length so that I can mount, I can mount these, uh, these uh, trucks to that base plate. Now that base plate will lie on top here. That will allow it to be recessed <clears throat> a little bit underneath. So that's where we're going with that. Also, also, I'll do a little bit of cosmetic work. This right here is a ding. Probably when it was dropped. But some of this stuff on here is due to manufacturing. Uh, for instance, I don't know if you can see it or not. That is pulled in. It is a little bit puckered. But that has to do with bending down. Uh, you can see it better on this one. As you can see, it's bowed in a little bit. That's how it was manufactured. I'm not going to correct that. I'm going to work around that. Uh, anything anything that is, is from manufacturing, I don't touch. But now, like I say, if there was a little ding or a... You know how kids are. They shoot this stuff with BB guns back in the day. That's, that's how I treated my early electric trains when I was a kid. Well, I'd take uh, a little bit of Bondo and I would uh, fill that uh, BB uh, uh, shot in and, and, and smooth, uh, and, and then we would go ahead and, and, and paint it. Uh, also, the roof, I haven't stripped the roof yet. Um, as you can see, you see the wrinkles on the side. That's for manufacturing. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to cover that up. I'm going to leave it as it is. However, let's see if it's this one or not. It's not. It's the other end. All right. You've got a, uh, there you go. You got that split there. That I will solder over and I will uh, do that smooth. And I've got a spot. I don't know if it's on, I think it's on this side. It's a little bit, it's a bit, a little bit rough. I will uh, smooth that out, put Bondo over it, and, and bring it back to the uh, uh, 
uh, to the rest of the uh, the roof. The roof is in really good shape. Actually, this whole thing is in good shape when it comes to uh, uh, to uh, bends and and uh, uh, pot marks on it. Virtually no rust. Uh, it uh, it will clean well and it should hold paint well. So also also I'm going to bolt the uh, the roof is going to be bolted to the body. Uh, I'm not going to use these uh, tabs that bend down. Those will be cut off. That will be filed clean. I'll set the top on. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put spreaders across here because you can see how flimsy it is. I will put spreaders across here and then I will probably bolt uh, to the spreader. I may put a center spreader and bolt it from the center. And that way I'll have plenty of room for the uh, pantographs on both ends. So that's what we're doing. Uh, I'll show you right quick how well this uh, McCoy motor works along with its uh, tag. And that's how exactly we're going to set it up here uh, when we get her when we get her done. So I am hooked on wires on the thing. There we go. All right, here it goes. This thing runs really well. I was lucky to get that. That is a McCoy die cast trolley motor. And every one of those that I've seen that were die cast have all exploded with zinc pest. Uh, this thing is, is really in good shape. Will it explode? Well, it may someday, but not in my lifetime. Hell, I'm going to be 74 here in a few more weeks. So I'll be long dead before it turns to dust. I'll be dust before it does. Well, that's it, guys. I'm going to let you go. It's, uh, it's cold out there. Stay warm. Uh, we'll have more updates. I'm hoping the next time you see it that the uh, body is mounted to the frame. Uh, ain't going to be painted, but uh, we'll be giving it some shakedown cruises, and hopefully we'll have the... Uh, the uh, cow catchers in place that's going to take just a little bit of uh, tinkering with um, but uh, I think it's coming along nice I think it's going to be a nice unit so uh, you guys have a great rest of the week and we'll talk with you later toodaloo